Hi there, and welcome to Neophyte.tv, the technology review with two points of view. My name is Tiffany Young. And I'm Ben Friedman. And every Monday, we bring you two unique points of view on some of the latest gadgets, software, and websites, along with the week's top stories. Don't forget to visit our website at www.neo-fight.tv to subscribe to this podcast or to send us your questions. You can even use our audio voice link to leave us voicemail questions using your computer's microphone. This week we'll be looking at Microsoft's wireless comfort keyboard, the Sony DSC-N1 camera, and the video website YouTube.com. We'll also answer some of your questions sent to us via email. But first, let's take a look at some of the news making headlines this week. A Belgian company has refiled a lawsuit against Google over search terms offered by Google's toolbar that it claims directs users to pirated software. If service check is entered, Google generates suggested search terms such as service check crack and service check keygen, which can lead to the where's sites. In response to the suit, a Google attorney told a Belgian newspaper on Wednesday that it could not filter the results of Google Suggest, citing censorship concerns. Digital media player vendor Creative Technology has asked a U.S. court to block sales of Apple's computer iPod devices, claiming they violate one of Creative's U.S. patents. The lawsuit asks the court to stop Apple from selling iPods and seeks unspecified financial damages. Creative claims to have invented the user interface software used by most portable digital media players, including the iPod. Samsung Electronics plans to unveil next week a prototype hard drive that can improve system performance and extend battery life on laptops. The drive is called a hybrid hard drive because it includes a flash memory storage space in addition to the usual magnetic disk storage. The flash memory acts as a storage buffer, holding data until it's full and only then writing the data to the disk. Sony is updating its VIO U Ultra Compact PC line with a new model that is the smallest VIO yet developed. The company said this week the UX50 packs a Windows XP based PC into a case about the size of a paperback book and like the previous models it has a touchscreen display. The screen slides up and down to reveal a full QWERTY keyboard underneath. It has a 30 gigabyte hard drive, Core Solo 1 gigahertz processor, 512 megabytes of memory and a built in camera. It weighs just 1.1 pounds. AMD launched a new line of Turion mobile processors this week. The Turion 64X2 chips will be the first 64-bit dual-core processors to reach the notebook market. AMD says 85% of PC users run at least six applications at once if you include antivirus and pop-up blockers. Like Intel's Core Duo, the Turion X2 is adept at running multiple programs at the same time. Apple announced the immediate availability of its consumer Intel-based laptop, the MacBook, equipped with a 13.3-inch widescreen and running on a Core Duo processor. It replaces the 12-inch G4 PowerBook and all iBooks and complements Apple's recently released MacBook Pro laptops. The MacBook is slimmer and slightly heavier than the old 12-inch Apple laptop and comes in black or white and with either a 1.8 gigahertz or a 2 gigahertz core duo processor. Are you looking to step up to the next level of HD video editing? Did you think that real-time HD editing solutions were out of your reach? If so, it's time to take a look at the Matrix Axio LE real-time editing platform, available at a breakthrough price. It features no render, HD and SD finishing in compressed and uncompressed formats, superior real-time color correction tools, advanced real-time effects, and a full complement of analog and digital audio and video inputs and outputs, all at a price point that puts it within the reach of any video studio. Find out more today at www.matrox.com forward slash video. And welcome back to Neophyte.tv. 
In this product spotlight, we're going to be looking at Microsoft's Wireless Comfort Keyboard, which is uh, one of their newest keyboard and mouse combos. Plugs uh, into your computer, or I should say the uh, receiver plugs into your computer via USB. And then the keyboard itself is wireless with no cables, just batteries that you have to uh, replace uh, occasionally. Um, and uh, it has the keyboard and the mouse uh, set together. And I gotta tell you, I quite like this uh, uh, keyboard. It it's, uh, feels pretty comfortable to me. The mouse is nice and large. For, I haven't got big hands. I'm a <laughs> piano player. I, no comments about big hands. No comments about my hands. You know what they say right. about big hands, right? <laughs> big gloves. <laughs> I'll be comment free. Okay, so you know <laughs> I can touch I, that one. The other I thing I liked about it. it was it has decent range. I I usually um, use it right in front of the uh, computer, but if you want to step back a bit, or if you happen to be a little ways away from your computer, the the transmitter and the receiver has some pretty good range. You can actually get you know fifteen twenty feet away from your PC, and it will still work. It'll still pick up. I think this is a huge clunky product. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben, but uh, you know. There probably are some good points to this, and, and uh, the range is good, but I, I have to say that... What don't you like about it? Look, look it's a at keyboard. the size of this keyboard. It's huge. I mean, who uses these buttons right here? I mean, do you use those buttons? Yes! You know, you I don't, use them! You don't use those I buttons. Don't, I don't. I must admit, I, you know, I always think I should use yeah. them. Like, I'll go, okay, okay, start media player. Oh, I could have used a button for no, that. No, I, I just... But I, I, by the time I remember that I have a button... Exactly. Th these buttons, I don't know about you folks and some people probably you know there may be people out there that do use these buttons i i don't use them i've asked a few people if they do use them just kind of a little uh, internal poll and they said no that they don't use them either so i think uh that you could get something a lot more slim and sleek and smaller. Now, did you, um, did you try than, typing on this? Did you, did you like? Did you not like the keyboard? I mean, I, th I think it's really uncomfortable. It? Yeah, I think it's uncomfortable for for me when I was I had my my wrist and hands on it. It felt it was a very uncomfortable kind of position. Um, I don't you, you think don't you like need these uh, angled styles. I mean, look, well, look you see at, the way the keyboard is like half this way and half that you way. You really have to have a big desk to take up that much space on your desk for just a keyboard. Not only that, the mouse is huge too. It looks like a Jed. Uh, Joan Jet Jetson. Jetsons. <laughs> Joan Jet. Thank you. Yeah, the Jetsons. Yeah, remember. Do 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 do. <laughs> um, so I think this is like really kind of a okay. A let me tell you big... one neat feature about this. Although, By the this way, should be done in software. Sorry, go does on. Does it take batteries? It does. Uh, how does it turn, how does it turn itself? Does it is it motion sensor to it's turn on and off? It turns itself off, you know, after you if you don't use it for a while, okay. I imagine. But, That's a nice uh, feature. It, it did not off. come with rechargeable batteries. You know, some of these come with a, a cradle that you stick it in right. to recharge. This one doesn't. Right. So when the batteries are are worn out, they're worn out. By the way, folks, you can't see the receiver, but uh, oh well, then I'll put it up. But it's huge. The receiver is like this big. It's uh, it's also another ridiculous, clunky, big object that I don't think that you really need to have to get the. I mean, you're typing, you're using this much of your keyboard for the most part. Why not have a keyboard that you, you know, you actually area covers what you use? The whole concept See? of wireless keyboard is a little odd to me because you don't move the keyboard very much. Wireless mouse is, I think, a much better idea. Exactly. Yeah, that's a really good point, too. Uh, right? Let me just so. say for this, uh, just a couple of things about it. Uh, the... Uh, one neat feature. I'm trying to find redeeming I think, qualities see, here. I think you lose like all your features. Can I get my one neat feature out, please? <laughs> oh, okay. Can one, I get my right, one fine, neat get, feature get out? Get Thank you. Out. <laughs> if you press, uh, there's a, a little button here on the side, on the front. The, by the way, this thing has kind of, it's kind of neat. The, the wheel doesn't click. It's a smooth scrolling wheel. This isn't the feature. I'm getting to the feature. Getting to the feature. <laughs> but you're saying more than one. <laughs> and it clicks left and right. You see that? So you can move it to the left and right and you have your two buttons here and it's kind of nice. But... There's this button here. If you press the button, it magnifies something on the screen. Okay, that's a cool feature. My only question is, is you know, every mouse could do that with the right bit of software. It's Ex not, you don't really exactly. need to have this particular mouse. Right. Why? Why? Again, my, my whole point is I'm not saying that this doesn't have a lot of features. I'm not saying it's not a good, good product in what it's used for. What I'm saying is why is it so darn freaking clunky? I don't understand. I don't understand why that's so... Okay, yes, I know you have big hands and we're not going to touch that, but... <laughs> but uh, but why does it really have to be? You know, maybe the mouse is okay as far as size if for bigger-handed people. But um, why the Do keyboard? Do you think you should say on the box for bigger-handed people? Right. <laughs> maybe. I mean, obviously. I mean, I I would actually you are, and you're be hard pressed. Hand, to... hand challenged, hand size challenged. You need the smaller mouse. Well, I play I play piano too, Ben, and uh, I don't need the size of mouse to play piano and maybe use I'm my wireless mouse. Yeah. With the big mouse. I don't know. <laughs> 
well, Won't listen, touch I, that either. <laughs> I, uh, I, I really like this keyboard. It felt very comfortable to me. I, was, uh, I don't mind the styling of it. I give it a 4 out of 5. I think uh, functionality on this is actually, you know, it's good as far as the features that it can do. My whole point is that it's big and clunky, like I said, and you can get the same exact features for a uh, slimmer, sleeker style. Uh, so I'm going to give this a, I'll barely give it a two. I'll barely give it a two uh, just because I think it should be a lot uh, slimmer. So that's so. two out of five for Tiffany, four out of five for me. So that's a grand total of six out of ten for the uh, Microsoft wireless comfort keyboard. <laughs> and we'll be right back. If you're looking for a custom-built computer system created to the exact specifications you're looking for, look no further than Puget Custom Computers at www.pugetcustomcomputers.com. Puget builds computers the way you want them built. They work hard to take the hype out of computer building, to help you make good decisions, and to help save you from paying for things you don't need. It's their goal to provide you with everything you need to have a hassle-free computing experience. For your next PC, look up www.pugetcustomcomputers.com. Welcome back to Neofight.tv. In this spotlight, we're going to cover the Sony DSC-N1 digital camera, which I absolutely love. This camera is an 8 megapixel, tiny little camera with a huge LSD, I LCD. mean LD, <laughs> LCD screen. You didn't screen. just say LSD, did you? <laughs> no. You didn't just say LSD. No, I meant... I'm not editing that. That is staying in. <laughs> I did not mean to say that. <laughs> what I meant to say, it has this really great screen on the back that you can see um, your entire big picture on. It's you a know, big screen. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a big screen. So it doesn't have a viewfinder, which I don't think is a big deal. But basically, you flip the camera over and it's got a big screen on the back, which is really, really nice. Plus, it's a very sleek, slim design. Another... Uh, uh, point that I love about this camera is that it has a touch screen. So uh, you can actually go on your screen and touch your menu items instead of looking for those tiny, tiny little icons that you forget what they are in the first place, like your timer icon and your 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 ski little ski guy that goes to your, you know, still picture what flower. What is with that ski guy, by the way? <laughs> What does that mean? It's you press this button and all of a sudden your pictures will, you guys noticed, will have skis on your on I've your never feet? noticed a What's difference the between the flower guy? and the skis. I've taken pictures and, you know. There's no difference in the flower and the skis. Well, I mean, when you take the picture, no. You know, I, I, I don't see it. You know, it, there's, so. there's always the p shot of the picture of the moon. And that never doesn't put a moon in your picture. <laughs> Just when you press that moon button. There's no moon. Where's oh the gosh, moon? Oh gosh, Ben. <laughs> I noticed. I didn't even notice that the actual moon button makes a difference in the picture either. Even when I take it at night, it's supposed to what change the shutter speed or something. I guess it's supposed to turn the flash off or something. I don't, I don't know. know. It does. It's supposed to do something. Anyway, my point is, is that. Oh, there was a point. Is that yes? Thank, thank you. <laughs> my point is, is that. Um, when you touch the screen, um, you can get to your menu items, and it actually tells you, and you know, it tells you uh, what you're actually looking at to change an option instead of kind of guessing at the icons. So I love that about That's it. That's true. I, those icons, yeah. especially if you're in a darker area, you know, you, you're trying to figure out which icon is this: the flash icon, is this the timer icon? Especially when you're taking a picture you're not supposed to be, right? When you're not supposed to, like, in, like uh, at a rock concert or something. Yeah, right. Like a Dave Matthews concert, no pictures. Well, you know, you want to get hypothetically a, a Dave Matthews concert. Uh, you know. Right, exactly. Right. Hypothetically. So, right. <laughs> Although I tell you, that's again the problem with the big screen is if you're in a dark room, the moment you take a picture, that big screen lights up and everyone knows who it was that took the picture. You have to sit on it really fast. <laughs> or, or, or put it down. If I or, sit on it, yeah. that's the only picture that will get taken. It's a one shot camera. <laughs> I said it, and the camera is it, done. It's now disposable. It's disposable. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yes, that that does light up the room. Yes. So so that and it is hard to see in the dark. And that was really my only big problem with this camera was that there's no viewfinder, as you said. Now normally, no viewfinder, right. not a big deal. You like to use the screen. You know, there isn't there's, there's no little thing for you to look through. You like to use the screen to compose your photos. But right. when it's dark, if it's at nighttime. Okay, uh, the screen is not very bright in dark light. So right. when you're trying to look at something, it's kind of hard to see. Is that is that the guy or is that the guy? And you have to kind of guess. And then you take the picture. Once you take the picture and the flash flashes, right. then you can see. Right. What would be great is maybe if it could somehow pre-flash or something. I don't know. Give you so you can well, see what your composed 
So oh. what you're taking a picture of? I haven't noticed it. I mean, I notice that in every camera, though. I, I don't yes, know. Yes, but some cameras, if it has a viewfinder, you can look through the viewfinder. Yeah, but it's still hard to see in dark. It is know? still hard to see. I in mean, dark. That, I think what you get in sleek design and the big LCD screen, <laughs> and the big LCD screen is uh, is definitely worth you know not being able to see completely well in the dark and. It's just so compact and light, and eight megapixel. Come on, you know, and touch screen, which is really one nice. One more point I don't like about it, not, and it's a good camera. I like the camera. Right. One more point I don't like about it is um, the menus. Yes, it's easy to navigate right. through them, but you have to navigate down a couple of slots sometimes to get to the feature you want. So if there is a dedicated button, some cameras will have a dedicated button for flash or a dedicated button. You don't have to go in, turn on the menu, find the thing you're looking for turn the option on and off, and then, you know, exit. You, right. you can just hit the button and you're done. So if you know the camera really well, you know, if you, and you know where every button is, then, then I think it's faster on there. Final point, fingerprints. <laughs> well, it's my point, yes, it does. You do get fingerprints, because you're doing touch screen, obviously. So anything touch screen, you're going to touch it and, you know. Imagine what computer screens would look like if they were touch screen. I know. I, well, and, and <laughs> it's true. In fact, uh, you know, tablet PCs, right. well, then you're using the pen. You're not really using the thing. But right. you do have to clean the screens. You know, do right. you find you get fingerprints on this? I do. I do. But at the same time, I'm not putting fingerprints on the lens of that you know, a lens of no. this, so it doesn't affect the picture at all. It just no. is annoying, and I have to clean it more. But I also think that that makes up for it in finding and knowing exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And I think I, this is another Detail. guy girl thing. But I think if you're a girl with like longer nails or longish nails, oh, right. you're, it's right. easier to touch that screen than a guy. I found it. You know, I have big fingers as, as we spoke about previously. <laughs> And uh, I find that. <laughs> I, what's wrong with big fingers? <laughs> and I find that uh, you know sometimes I hit the wrong thing because you know I think if I had a nail that I could you know touch right. on the screen with a little more precision. You know what would be a good idea is if, why don't they just have those you know like the the uh, your little uh... stylus. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. One more thing for you to lose, I guess. Well, no, but if they have a little port, you could actually use your stylus, take it out, and do your thing. Why don't they have a guy that comes over and takes the picture for you? <laughs> um, it was a simple suggestion. A stylus is not going overboard. No way, no way. <laughs> so I like this camera. I uh, I had the problems with the no viewfinder and all that stuff, but I still thought it was a good camera. I give right. it a four out of five. I'm definitely giving this camera a five out of five. Uh, I think that the sleek design, the eight megapixel, wow! I mean, you can blow that up into poster size plus and really get um, some amazing shots. So that's four out of five for Ben. Five out of five for me. That gives the uh, Sony DSC N1 digital camera a nine out of ten. And we'll be right back. The last few years has seen a proliferation of handheld devices, from cell phones to PDAs to iPods. Yet our clothing has not kept up with this technological advancement. Until now. The technology-enabled clothing system from Scott E. Vest utilizes a patented, hidden personal area network to free users from the tangled wires of cell phone earbuds, CD or MP3 headsets, digital phone cards, battery extenders, and so on. Match this with specially designed pockets that let you carry your gear without visible bulk, and you've got a garment made for today's high-tech lifestyle. Visit their website to see the full line of stylish clothing for the technologically advanced at www.scottevest.com. And welcome back to Neophyte.tv. In this spotlight, we're going to be looking at the website YouTube, or YouTube, YouTube, YouTube? <laughs> I don't know. YouTube. YouTube. YouTube.com. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, what this website is, is it's, it's kind of like Flickr or Shutterfly or some of these photo sharing sites. It's basically a video sharing site where mm -hmm. you take your video, whether it's from a camcorder or from a webcam. A lot of people just use their webcams you know, on the computer. You record some little bit of video. You then upload it to mm -hmm. YouTube. YouTube then hosts it for you, so anyone in the world can go and see it. You can make it private, but the whole point of YouTube is to make it public, that anyone can see it. You tag it with keywords. So let's say you take a video of someone skateboarding or something. You upload it to the site. You put the, uh, you put the maybe the keywords would be sports, skater, skateboard, mm -hmm. crash if they fall off or something. You, <laughs> you put up a bunch of keywords, and then people who want to see videos on skateboarding can type in, I'm going to search for skateboard crashes and it will pop up your video as, along with anyone else that has tagged with skateboarding crashes. And let me tell you why I like about YouTube. First of all, 
it's free. And we love that, free. Well, what's amazing about <laughs> that is that we do love free. What's amazing about it is this is a heck of a lot of bandwidth. I don't know what these guys are, you know, they've got millions of videos up there. And I noticed they didn't have a lot of advertising for as much, you know, as much bandwidth as they've got to be using and paying for somewhere. I don't know what the somewhere. business model is. I think, so. I think they want to end up selling videos and maybe they'll take a cut of it. Oh, I see. Although of right. a million videos that are on there, I don't know how many of them people would pay for. Well, do you, you lose your copyrights, you, your copyright protection when you upload to YouTube, right? You don't lose it, no, but you are when you're uploading well, to YouTube and you post it publicly, you are basically saying anyone can watch this video. Now, you, you can put a thing in there. I think they're going to be looking at a thing where you can right. say you don't get to watch it until you pay a dollar. Oh, okay, right. Or you know, And then after you pay that dollar, um, you know, you can watch it. And maybe, I don't know if YouTube will keep a portion of that. I haven't really explored that. <laughs> there is also a 10-minute limit to uh, how long your videos can be, unless right. you're part of the director program. And here's a plug. <laughs> We have just become part of the director's program, and you can get neophyte.tv uh, up on YouTube. So right. if you happen to be somewhere where you're on YouTube and you want to see it there, you can get it. But One the video good. quality isn't that great. The video quality, Sorry. you're right. It's not as good as our website. Right, right. And, uh, so go to our web. If you were going to watch, if you're going to be watching from the web, I, I would go to our website first. YouTube as a, a secondary. Um, if uh, I don't know. Why would they go to YouTube instead of going to... Well, you know, I, some people will just, they'll, the reason we put it up on YouTube is not as an alternative to our site, but more so that if somebody's oh, searching YouTube. Oh, broader, like a broader. Yeah, Someone goes there first. If they first. don't know about our site. I see. And they go searching for a technology podcast or oh, something okay. like that. They're going to find it. And when you click on, it, if you click on the video, it will jump you back to our site. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, That's great. And we've had a lot of people. We've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who have watched it on YouTube, even though we've only had it up there a very short time. Wow. Um, That's great. The other cool thing about this is that you can embed the video after you upload your video. You can it gives you a bit of code, and you can put that code on your website and embed the video in your website. So when people go to your website, nice. when they go to Tiffany.com or whatever, <laughs> you, can you might your, get something else if you go to that website, <laughs> and it's not me. <laughs> um, that's right. Uh, <laughs> then uh, then you can embed it right on the website. Great, which yeah, that's is great. that's pretty cool. Now, um, you know, along with the the new era of, of everybody's a producer, everybody kind of is now. It seems like we're really kind of pushed into the market where people are getting a lot better at picking up their video cameras, their cameras, and they're making their own home movies. They have to do with you know they have clips of video, clips of pictures, and that is a really great site, I think, in order to put it out there and share with your family. That, that's a nice part. And like any site, there's some good stuff on there, and there's some stupid stuff, and there's some right. adult stuff, and you know. But the problem I did find with this, though, is that the upload time takes forever, and and you may not get your when, once it does upload, it does automatically convert, which is nice uh, to uh, the format for YouTube. But um, it, I could upload it and then not see it for a day or two. Yeah. Um, I, it, it, depending sometimes on the I'm board. wondering if I did something wrong. Did I not get it right? So it's a little confusing for me. It is true. It does take for... So if you're new to this site and you're going to go and upload a video, mm -hmm. not only do you have to wait for the video to upload, but then it has to convert it to... I think it uses Flash as the format. And it, it can take hours. It, it can takes take, a long time. It can take time. days. It, can, so it takes a long time. It's not like instant gratification where you're upload it right now and then a minute later, boom, there's your video. Right. But it's free. <laughs> it is we keep, free. We keep wanting everything for free. <laughs> That's true. And I have to tell you, I uh, I really like this site. I don't think they're doing anything wrong yet. I uh, I yet. give. Well, no, I, I think they've yeah. got a really neat model. I, I hope they stay in business. Hope they're able to make enough money to pay for what must be a considerable amount of bandwidth. Right. Absolutely. So uh, and they host our show. So uh, maybe I'm a little biased, but uh, it's five out of five for me. You know, I'm going to give it. Uh, Boy, I should give it a five out of five because it hosts our show. But of course, we're the consumer reports of gadgets, right? Right. <laughs> we give our unbiased opinion. Uh, so I'm going to give it a four out of five. I'm just going to give it minus a point just because it takes so long to upload. It takes a long time to convert, and it takes one to two. I mean, it takes a considerable amount of time to actually see your product up on the site. Other than that, though, it really is a great concept. I love how they don't have a ton of advertising on there um, yet. Yet, yet. So you don't get spammed to death when right. you're trying to you know, get your work done or look at other people's videos. Some video sites so. actually make you watch an ad before you can see the video, you know, a video ad. And oh. they, don't, they don't do that on YouTube. Right. So that's good. That's really nice. Have that's you ever really done that? Nice. You go to like so. CNN.com and you want to watch yeah, the story. Exactly. And before the story is, hey, buy Loading the new Ford 10, F-150. Loading 9, 8. Seven, your video will be starting, and, and then right. you're seeing a commercial at the same time. You're I like, know. "That's not." Hey, excuse me, I did not want to wait, you know, an extra five seconds to upload that, you know, that commercial. 
you know, well, mine should have been playing already. <laughs> so. so that's four out of five for Tiffany, five out of five from me. So that is nine out of ten for the video website, www.youtube.com. And we'll be back in just a moment. Studio One Productions has been a leading source of high-quality audio and video equipment for the video and film industry since 1993. Whether you're just getting started with video editing and production or you're a seasoned pro, there's no better place to visit to pick up the essentials of quality production. Studio One's easy-to-navigate website makes it easy to shop for monitors, cables, mics, instructional videos, filters, adapters, in fact, everything you need to produce professional quality video. Visit them today at www.studioneproductions.com. Welcome back to Neofight.tv. It's now time for our email portion of the segment. And our very first question, the question is, is it safe to use web-based email instead of Outlook? And I guess my answer to that is, I didn't know that there was really a big difference in security. I, I thought with Microsoft and Outlook, uh, or Microsoft uh, uh, Hotmail and MSN, I thought their security was so up to date; it was equal to or greater than even what Outlook has. That's you know, I, I, I think you're right when you're talking about like encryption and you know somebody sniffing your email if they're like sitting on there. It's, <laughs> you know, what I mean, sniffing your email, it's like they're they're uh, watching the packets go by and they try to find your email packets and, and that stuff. It's, it, I don't it, even know what that is. I don't know what that is. They're eavesdropping. He was dropping on on the on the uh, signal. They're trying to read your email while you're typing it. Really? Yeah, and I think that is. I think it's just okay, as secure. Okay, I guess I'm completely naive to this. I think it's just as secure. I think you're right. It is just as secure. Here is the problem: when you have Outlook Web Mail or Outlook uh, Mail on your computer, the comp mail is stored on your computer. Right. If you have um, Yahoo Mail or one of these web-based ones, the email is stored at Yahoo. Right. Now right. you're like, okay, it's at Yahoo. What's the big deal? There was just a case in China where some dissident was using Yahoo Mail and somebody found out about it in the government and they went to the government went to Yahoo and said we want a copy of this guy's mail and because it was on Yahoo servers Yahoo gave it to them wow and this wow. guy got arrested wow yeah this guy, and, he, and and he he didn't <laughs> so, commit any crimes other than being a dissident but he was arrested for you know so that probably wouldn't have happened if it, it had been on his computer and especially if it had been encrypted on his computer um, so you're saying if you're doing anything illegal, <laughs> use Outlook? Yeah, I mean, you know what? The, the, it could happen here. If, if, if for some reason you're being suspected of anything, I mean, maybe that's good if you actually are a criminal. But, right. but if, you know, if the government went it's to Yahoo or if the government went to MSN, they could get your records. It's kind of like a public library kind of deal. Same thing. It they is. Know, the records they are stored over out. there. It's not, you right. know, they're not stored on your computer. Or, or um, I wonder if a competitor, if they want to, you know, if they were going to, sue you for something or, or what have you, right. uh, and uh, you know, let's say Leo Laporte sues us and, and wants to see if our email, uh, uh, maybe they could subpoena you know, uh, our email, and if it's on our computer, we could delete it, we could do whatever. If right. Yahoo has got it, when you click delete on your Yahoo account or your Hotmail, you don't know if it's actually deleted. Right. Yes, it goes off your screen, but maybe it's stored in a backup server somewhere. Well, they probably don't really. Maybe, maybe overnight. I would say maybe back up until like they do the sweep of the night and and, and knock it all off and reset you think it for they the do next it every morning. Night. You don't think I don't they're know. keeping any of that email? Well, what are they going to keep it for? They very don't. Very naive. Yeah, it, it's about very no, naive. no, 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 no. It's about making money. It's about making money, and it's costing them more money to serve more emails on on their you know their web-based servers. So why wouldn't they wipe it out? I don't know. I mean, it's Storage about, is getting cheaper. It's cheaper. about money. You're right. I mean, no, it's about money, it's, but they've got no reason to store. I mean, there, there would have to be some sort of monetary motivation for, for a third-party uh, company to want to store your email if you're not the government. Government, well, you know, they don't care. I mean, I think, is, don't they have it to where you just type in, like, one word, like, terrorism or, you know, I don't know, like, no, how to make a bomb or something? You don't something, have to type then, it. You just say it on a podcast, and they're going to come to your house. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's, isn't that true? Like, you type in a certain number of keywords, and FBI, like, you know, is watching you or... I, do I don't know how paranoid. I mean, maybe that is true. I don't know. But here's, you know, but all I want to say. Of course, they probably don't have the manpower to, you know, really follow up on that. I just no, heard it. All I want to say is, if you're using online email, don't assume that it's 
secure. Don't do anything sensitive. Okay, my, my, and what I've done, actually, I use, uh, because I use both, what I do is I actually just download every, every like, uh, four or five months or so, I just clean out my box and download it to my hard drive on my computer, wipe it out of my online um, account, and it's gone. Which you assume. You assume it's gone. I assume it's gone, because I don't have, see why they would want to keep it, Ben, for... <laughs> <laughs> other reason. So anyway, so uh, that's what I do. So I guess to answer your question, uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Is it safer? I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> oh, the question was, uh, do we use web-based email instead of Outlook? I use Outlook, and I would continue, but that's okay. Not a big Just difference. download it to your hard drive and wipe it off, uh, just in case they want to keep it and use it against you a year from now. Our <laughs> next email <laughs> is... I use Internet Explorer, but I've also heard of Firefox. Is it so much better? Now, I know you use Internet Explorer. Correct. Yeah. I have used both. I've used Internet Explorer and Firefox. Now, Firefox is, for, for those of you who don't know, Internet Explorer, which comes with Windows, comes with PC, it's right there when you get it, you know, is, is the browser that still the majority of people use because it's there. Right. It's just there. Mm -hmm. Firefox came along and decided they wanted to be a competitor to Microsoft just in the browser marketplace with, with Firefox. And they have this free of charge, very fast browser. And a lot of people like it. A lot of people like it. I like it too. I just have a couple of problems with it. And that is um, that although it is faster, uh, it, they make a big deal of the security on it. So things are more secure. They don't, it doesn't have the holes, the, the vulnerabilities. That That's nice. That's exploded. a really nice feature. Yeah. yeah, so getting viruses and that kind of stuff. Right. But the problem is that means that some sites don't work. Some sites will just not work with, with uh, Firefox. You, so you, can't you just take Firefox and, and not use it for those sites and just go, okay, well, I'll just use Internet Explorer for this particular site? That's right. So it just means you have to keep Internet Explorer around. For now. For now. And for if now. you're going to go do something like Windows Update or uh, I had a banking site, my bank didn't uh, didn't work with Firefox. Really? Yeah, I don't know what it was. If it was something, uh, uh, I think it's ActiveX. Far, um, you know, right. um, Firefox won't use ActiveX. Hmm. So my answer to you. But would that, be, that has to do with the security, though, as well, right? Exactly. It's, right. it's more secure. If you can't right. use ActiveX, somebody else can't take over your computer. Boy, you think that if since Firefox is more secure, that Bing would definitely be using that instead of. <laughs> it's getting there. See, all these other things have to catch up with the technology. That's true. Isn't that true? That's true. Yeah. But I think that the bank thinks you know, ninety-five percent of people still use. Internet Explorer, so what do we right. care about the other five? That... We're hacking away at our keyboards with a hammer still. <laughs> <laughs> Chipping away at stone tablets. <laughs> the big clunky keyboards. <laughs> uh, so my answer would be use Firefox if you like it, try it out, mm -hmm. but, but certainly hang on to Internet Explorer, not like you can really uninstall it anyway, but right. make sure you always know where it is because sometimes you will need it right. for certain sites. And that just about wraps up the amount of time we have for our show today. Please don't forget to go and bookmark our sites, www.neo-fight.tv, uh, where you can go and subscribe to the show or through iTunes, you subscribe to us there. By the way, I don't want to mention we have an audio-only version. So if you have like an right. iPod Nano and you want to listen to this uh, on the way to work, I'm much better looking on audio. <laughs> It's true. I've been told Funny. that. I have, a, I have a face for audio, people say. I have a face for radio. So, uh, you must have some honest friends. <laughs> brutally, brutally, brutally honest friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm better now. I'm it's, okay. It goes, it goes back to that, that age-old age uh, question, does my butt look big in this? Yes. <laughs> That's why we have this desk here. I don't want to talk about my butt. Ben's this very desk. handsome. I don't know who is telling him such lies. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, that's why the desk cuts me off at the waist. <laughs> so anyway, uh, where are we going? Oh yeah, that's we're the end good, of the yeah, show right. for this week. So <laughs> thanks very much for tuning in. Thanks and, for joining uh, us. Don't forget to and putting up with us. Don't forget to send us emails or audio voice links or uh, video blogs, uh, and we'll see you next Monday. Thanks for watching. See you next week.